Good morning, everyone. Today on Nurturing Big Ideas Today, I wonder how much you look to networking and building relationships as a big part of your small business, as a big part of being an entrepreneur. I'm pretty sure that you read about it. I'm pretty sure that you've heard about it. I'm pretty sure that people say to you, well, you have to do that. And then what? And then what? We're gonna talk a lot about that today, especially the networking part, because networking is how you build those relationships. And my special guest today, Catherine McGraw-Patterson, is from Colorado, and um, she and I met and had coffee, and I know about her business, her, her, her networking uh, group, which is so phenomenal. She's the found, founder of Weibo, Women Entrepreneurs and Business Owners. Um, she's also a business coach. She has, uh, she's a strategist. She says business marketing strategist. I love this. Catherine, I love this part. A mom, a wife, a community member, and a friend. And that's so important for people to understand, yes, you are all those things. So you don't leave that at home when you go out to network. You take it with you because that's who you are. So she's an, been an independent entrepreneur since 1999, which I was surprised at. That's a long time. It is I mean, a long time. A good bit of time, Kath. Catherine, she searched for a networking group to support her goals, not only for growing her business through clients and contracts, but for personal and professional development. And that's why she founded Weibo. So this quote from uh, Catherine Seif, my dream was to find a community of like-minded business owners with whom I could share experiences and knowledge so that we all grew together. So important, Catherine, so important. And your tagline, connect, support, and grow. I mean, that really does say it all. So welcome to- Thank you. I'm so excited to be here, Yvonne. Smart Conversations with Women. Um, Kathleen, Kathleen, I keep saying I call on you Kathleen because you remind me of Kathleen Gage, who was also very energetic, very smart, and also out there connecting women. But but when we met and we talked about Weibo, tell me a little bit about the beginnings of that uh, community that you built. And it's based in Colorado, so let's tell everyone right now it's based in Colorado. You will get all the information on this in the blog post I write, but. Um, Catherine, the, t the title, the name, Weibo, did you create it so you would have the W-E-B-O and make it easy to say, or did it just happen? I d you know, <laughs> it's so funny because I started Weibo on a Sunday afternoon on a spur of the moment, like part of a greater networking challenge that I had built for myself. And I was working with a social media coach at the time, and she said, oh, you should start a group. And so I did. So I don't really have a lot of clear memories about being intentional about anything that I did. Like Weibo is almost like having a baby. I had, I created this thing and it, it created its own legs and it's now walking around the world doing its thing. And I'm just kind of like its mother making sure it eats and sleeps and does what it needs to do. But um, no, I think I probably was looking for something short and sweet that, that encapsulated the name. Uh, and in the intent of the organization and Weibo just kind of became what it was. It is easy to, to um, trip off of the tongue, so to speak. And I, I look at things like that as a writer because words are something that are important to me. And where you place them in the sentence or where you place them in the paragraph, how they look on the page, all of those things are things that I think are important. And Weibo is... It actually is more than just easy to say. It, it's, to me, it's a friendly acronym. Even if I didn't know what it was, I would be able to guess fairly easily. Yes. It was about women and business and uh, maybe even entrepreneurs for the E. But it, I find it very, like, fun and, and friendly and, and, you know, so, so back to what it is and why you made it and the fact that it's more than just here, come and meet a bunch of other small business owners. Tell us about that. Well, as you said, I've been a, an entrepreneur since 1999. I started my first business in Hong Kong and in, I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur. So I have my dad to, um, to guide me and advise me. Um, but I have sadly far outgrown him in the entrepreneurial world. Um, 
And, you know, so when you're a solopreneur, you're a solopreneur because you like to make the decisions and you like to work by yourself. But there are a lot of times when you run up against limits of your in your own knowledge or you need um, to learn something new or a new skill or be introduced to somebody. And, and it's really hard when your only, re, your only professional relationships are with your clients. Yeah. At least that was my situation. And so I would go out to networking organizations and it was very schmoozy. You know, it was very pitchy. This is what I do. What do you do? Um, even in larger leads groups through the chambers, it was all about exchanging business and either I was spoiled or I needed more where I didn't necessarily want to exchange business. What I wanted to ask was what email service provider are you using or um, what printer should I go to or, you know, things that would help me run my business better and grow my own knowledge as an entrepreneur. And so when I created Weibo, I looked at the other groups around me and I, I tried to really sit down and think about what, what was I missing um, in the groups that I was participating in. And it was that ability to bring my pain points and my challenges and my requests for assistance, not just introduce me to your printer, but you know, how do you guys price or how do you write your contracts? Um, and so I created a space for women who work by themselves or who work in small, who own small businesses and they're the only decider and they are lonely in their business and they need, they need other voices speaking into their knowledge and their skill set and their success. And so that's the way Weibo has been set up. And our, our whole shtick, so to speak, is um, around masterminding. And so even our, our lunches and our after hours, which are social events, can, they have a component of masterminding um, built into them. And then we have professional development events, and then we actually have a small group mastermind program called Power Circles. So I like to say I'm like a toddler, um, and that my unique uh, networking personality is, you know, I'll play with my blocks, and you play with your blocks, but I don't necessarily want to talk to you. I just want to share blocks every once in a while, because um, I'm an interesting. In, yeah, and so... Um, so that's kind of what Weibo is. It's not the the face to face. This is what I do. This is who I serve. What can you do for me? What can I do for you? It's more about, hi, I'm KP. Um, I need help with, and then other people at the table can then um, chime in with their expertise and their knowledge. Um, and we always say that all the women have either gone through it, they're going through it, or they're going to go through it. And so we're all you know there to support each other and help each other grow. That was a long that's, answer to your yeah, short Yeah, and I think that's really amazing. Um, one thing you said is uh, the fact that women are lonely. Yes. That's really very profound in, in a way because you don't think of it that way. You, you don't want to apply that kind of that word. That's a really emotional word. It makes it, it brings out emotions uh, when you hear it. And, you know, it's kind of a, a sad thing. But to your point, having a place to go uh, where women are going to share not just their quote unquote um, elevator pitch and you know with what happens there. I used to always yeah. say to people, okay, it's your turn. You can go up to the second floor. When you get to the <laughs> second floor, that's it. We're done. <laughs> um, but for women especially, I think the loneliness comes not just from being a solopreneur and not knowing much about um, the kinds of things in your business that you don't do. So, but it also comes from not knowing other people to your point. And so one of the groups I belonged to years ago, Rochester Professional Consultants Network, uh, on Fridays, the meetings were teaching. So, um, and they were held at a different place. And so you brought your business questions and everybody shared what they thought you could do about whatever the problem was. And then the next week it was tech questions. So you brought all your technical issues. I got more yeah. technical, technical issues solved in those meetings and saved me so much money not having to go to um, someplace to hire somebody. They just told me, here's what you do with your printer or whatever. So I, those are very valuable. I never forgot that. And so that's what you remind me of. Weeble reminds me of that because it, again, 
it isn't about I'm a book coach or I'm a business coach or I'm this. It's about how can I help you today? Yes. What do you need? And by the way, if you could help me, here's what I need. I really love that. And so, I mean, I know it's grown and I know it's uh, based mainly in Colorado, but you said early on that um, you've done business in Hong Kong. So you have, tell us a little bit about that because not many of us have that background. Well, I was not in Hong Kong of my own accord. I had a shotgun marriage where my then fiance came home one day and said, they want me to move to Hong Kong. And I said, well, we have to get married. And he said, okay. So <laughs> I guess he wasn't even my boyfriend. I mean, he was just my boyfriend when he had that conversation and he quickly became my fiance. Um, so we actually got married in 97 and moved immediately to Hong Kong. Um, and we were there for the first five years of our marriage. When I got to the, to the city, I got a position with a construction management um, firm out of the UK, um, and they quickly pulled out of the region. So as the, marketing, as the regional marketing director, I was the first one to go, and um, the directors asked me to help create a new business. So I was their first employee. Well, after two years, I was wearing many, many hats, as we always do in a startup. But we had grown from three people to 140 people Holy with projects God. throughout the region. And I was the um, regional marketing director. I was the PA to the CEO. I was the office mom, office manager. And it all came to a head one day. Um, and we... Um, we're sending a proposal out and I was trying to fix a toilet and I was trying to hire a secretary all at the same time and things kind of calmed down in the afternoon and my boss came in and he said, oh, he was Scottish and he said, oh, there's a six million dollar error in the proposal. And I was like, Shh, excuse me, you know, uh, and because the, the courier had already left. And so we scrambled around and replaced the page and couriered out new proposals. And he and I sat in his office after everything had finally calmed down. And both of us were in tears. Like we were just like, holy cow, what did we just do? And I said, I cannot focus on the marketing function while I'm, I'm in the office and I have to do all, I have to be all of these other people. And he said, no, you, you can't. And he said, why don't we do this? You go home. Um, and contract, we'll contract all of our marketing through you. So on Friday, I was a corporate employee, and on Monday, I was an entrepreneur. <laughs> and um, it, it, Hong Kong is actually a fairly small community for expats, and so all of these relationships that I had built through partnerships with that company, um, I had other uh, architects, engineers, and construction management people from other firms calling me before the end of my first week. At the end of my first week, I had signed three, three new clients. So I'm what I call an accidental entrepreneur. Even though I'm a fourth generation entrepreneur, I certainly didn't go into my own business ownership with a plan or intention or a strategy. I just kind of was running away from something that wasn't working and just landed in my own business and then suddenly had clients. And so um, I was able to serve that community for three years before we moved home. Um, and I came home and had my babies and then was bored. I'm, I'm not a full-time mom kind of person. And so I started contracting back to um, contacts that I had here in the Denver office in the AEC world or in the Denver area. And, um, and again, was able to create a business and built some really key partnerships over the years that did not require me to network and, um, have had a viable business since 99. So, and still able to stay home with my babies and do that's pretty babies. amazing. That's, yeah. that's a really, really interesting story also. Um, because I, I think you're leaving out some important things. Okay. Even though you became this and it kind of the universe said, here's what we're going to do for you, uh, Catherine. We're going to help you create this business. You brought to it all the experience and knowledge that you had gained up to then working in the world. Yes. So women tend to um, discount the great experiences that they have. Um, not that you are, but but I think uh, the women watching, I want them to understand that your experiences count to help you build your business. You don't have to have been 
Um, you don't have to suddenly say, I'm going to become an entrepreneur and set up a business and, and like Kath, Kath, Catherine here, have people fall into your lap. You need to say, what are my skills? What do I want to achieve? I mean, the things you probably teach people. Uh, Catherine. Absolutely. What is the unique problem that you were put on this earth to solve? Mm -hmm. And what are your unique skills that you have to solve it and the passion for it? And you're absolutely right. Um, in hindsight, I had built a very strong personal brand in the Hong Kong market. I brought um, some American best practices to a market that really, you know, people look at Hong Kong as this big world city. It's, it's not, it was not very sophisticated when I got there in terms of what I did. So I brought some, um, best practices from the U S so I was, you know, wowing people even within the corporate world or else I would not have gotten those calls. If I was just Joe Schmo. um, I would not have, have had three clients by the end of my first week because they knew I had something to offer that they needed. Yes. And I had been very, I had been intentional about building that brand. And the other thing is um, that ties into my story is that I really have really, am a, I'm an extroverted introvert and I, I hate networking. And there's a, a bunch of reasons why childhood trauma wise, why I don't love networking, but that is just another example of what I call covert networking. I had built some fantastic relationships just by showing up and doing the work and, and building that brand. And when I needed those relationships to convert to business um, results, they did. It didn't, I didn't have to go to leads groups. I didn't have to go to um, networking events. I just had to make a couple of calls and, and leverage the relationships I had already built, which um, I've learned that I am actually a great networker. And I was using relations like that, relationships like that for years um, without going to networking events. So I had convinced myself that I did not love to network, but what I really do love is to build relationships. So well, isn't that interesting? Because as I said earlier, networking is about meeting other people. It's about yeah. what you can offer other people and what they might be able to offer you. And so let's slide then right into something that you did recently called Lunching with Lions. It's behind you. It's a book, folks. We're right. going to talk more about it in another, um, in another podcast that I'm going to be doing. But in the end, tell us about, um, I mean, it's just the title blew me away. <laughs> I mean, really seriously, titles, uh, people don't understand how important titles are. I, I am a former book publisher. And so I can tell you titles and subtitles to help sell books. The cover also is, is just, can you hold it closer to the camera so we can see it? So this is the lion and he's, he's having lunch. So he has his utensils and his table. And then on, I don't know if you can see it, but on the, on the plate is a little name tag that says, hello, my name is Bob. And you have to read the book to find out who Bob is. That's awesome. 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 So, I mean, tell us a little bit about the book then, because it, if you are like so many other people and you don't like networking, um, I think it isn't a matter, for me, it isn't a matter of like, for me, it's a matter of, I have to get up, I have to get dressed, I have to put my face on, and, and now I have to go out and be um, presentable. And in the end, once I'm there, I'm pretty good, but not everyone is. Sometimes the getting up and getting ready part is easy for women, but when they get there, it isn't. Tell us more about the book. Well, so as I mentioned earlier, I um, have a little bit of childhood trauma. I've, I'm 51 and a half this month, and um, I've moved 20 times in my life, and that is major moves. I've lived in 17 cities, um, seven wow. states, and four countries, and so um, that's a, that averages out to about every two and a half years of my entire life, starting when I was six weeks old. Um, and so I've been at really key points in my emotional development, you know, taken out of familiar surroundings and, and the people that I knew and the, the social rules and like plopped down in places where I knew nothing or no, nobody and everybody around me was literally strangers. Um, <clears throat> so that, that can screw a girl up. And, um, and so um, as I said, I had this, I had this big hang up about networking. And, and when I say networking in this sense, I mean intentional going out to networking events 
or intentional joining leads groups and walking into that room full of strangers because um, as I just alluded to, I'm great at building the relationships um, very naturally, but it's that, it's that networking event that really, you know, makes me want to vomit. And so, um, I created this business for 20 years. It did not require me to network. It leveraged relationships and referrals, which is networking. And, um, about four years ago, I pivoted my business a little bit and it, and it required me to build a, a local, um, network of contacts in order to succeed. And I realized I had no idea. Not only did I not want to do it, I really had no idea how to network because I had steadfastly avoided it um, until well into my 40s. And so I, like any good business strategist, I created a strategy for myself. I created some goals and objectives and I um, built a strategic plan. I had to meet, I had to go to this many groups and meet this many people and have met this many coffees. And, um, and then I set about to intentionally you know, do the things that needed to get done to achieve that plan. And Weibo grew out of part of that plan, that the online networking component of it. And it's so funny because I can remember back to that period and emailing people that I knew and asking for introductions and really literally wanting to die before I sent the emails because it just felt so awful. But what I realized when I went out into the world is that a lot of us don't like networking and um, we're not really taught how to do it. Um, it's, it's usually framed in more of a social um, context, go out and meet people, um, which can be really hard for those of us who are fairly introverted mm -hmm. um, because we, you know, we don't love that. And, and so what I did was I, I create made it into a study of behavior and why, why people don't do it well. And I learned kind of how to, how to frame it as a business activity instead, how to frame it around my business goals and my business objectives, how to be very strategic about who I connected with and the groups that I put myself in, and then ultimately to track my results because seeing the success that I gained um, created that dopamine loop, right? That positive feedback. And so I was seeing the positive results on my business, which then made it more um, palatable to go out and do the networking, which gained me more success, which made it easier, which made it, so now I can, I mean, I, it's not, a, I still hate it. I, I'm not going to lie. I still don't love it and would much rather be with my best friends, but you know, you have to do it and um, I can do it now and, and get the results that I'm looking for because I'm very intentional about the groups that I join and the connections that I'm making. And, um, and I, I run into a lot of women who are like, that sounds kind of mercenary. And I'm like, it's not mercenary. It's, it's a business activity. And every minute we take away from our business is an investment. And so you have to spend it wisely. It is not, um, it's, it's not a fun, it's not a fun activity. I mean, it can be fun for you. I know plenty of people who, who claim right, right. that it's fun. <laughs> I don't believe them, but they claim it is. <laughs> um, but if you're taking, if you're taking time out of your business, your time costs money. And mm -hmm. so to be very, um, clear about why you're putting yourself in that room and who you're connecting with and what you want to come out of that is just like buying a printer or a computer or, a new microphone is what are your goals for that piece of equipment? What are you willing to invest? How are you going to measure the success of that purchase? Networking is no different when it comes to your business. And that is really what the book is about is to take the emotion out of it and really frame it more as a, as an objective business activity and um, learn how to maximize that investment of time, energy, and money that you're putting into it. So talk about the title, though. I mean, Lunching with Lions, um, I, people can get a couple different ideas about what might be in the book by, by that. So do I want to go have lunch with a lion? I'm not sure. Is Lunching with Lions dangerous? Um, maybe. But to the point that you do and you should, if you're building a business, get out there and um, do these networking events, how did the title how, how did it influence you and how do you want it to influence us? 
Well, so it, it absolutely has many meanings um, and it's meant to be a little intimidating, right? Because that's how networking feels for a lot of us. You, you know, I want to point out that the subtitle is Strategies for the Networking of Verse. Right. Um, so these, you know, it's really written, although it's, I've, the feedback I get is the tips in it are great for anybody who networks. It's really written to the person who, like me, was not comfortable networking. So it can feel scary. Um, but the, I, in the beginning of the book, I dive into why you might feel, um, hesitant to network and, and there's some evolutionary and sociological reasons why, um, evolutionarily when we were, um, evolving as, as pre-people tribes, you know, being part of that tribe was literally meant the difference between life and death. You had a group to help feed you, support you, watch your children those kinds of hunt with you, those kinds of things. And, um, I tell a story in the very beginning of the book about a little tribe of pre people and a, and a little guy named Bob who has just joined the troop, but he has not made any of the, the relationships that you need to be really part of the tribe. And so as they're trekking across the, the, the grasslands, you know, he trips and, and falls and, and twists his ankle, but because he does not have any of those vital relationships within the, the group, nobody is paying attention to him. And so the group keeps walking and he's left behind and then the lions come. So in the book, the lions um, symbolize what happens to you and your business um, if you don't make intentional connections with the people that you need to connect with. It's, it's the threat to your business because while we evolved to be part of the tribe so that we really literally didn't get eaten today, being part of the tribe means, you know, having referral partners, having power partners, um, having clients, getting the revenue that we need in our business. And so the lions symbolize um, what can happen to you and your business if you are not strategic and intentional about making the right relationships? That's so, so big. Strategic and intentional. Hmm. Got my uh, tongue wrapped around my eye teeth. Can't see what I'm saying. Um, the intentional, the word intentional, uh, we've talked about it before on uh, Smart Woman Conversations because that to me is a really big part of developing or creating or becoming an entrepreneur and a small business owner. What is the intention? Because back to my book publishing days, it, if someone came to me with an idea for a book or a manuscript and the first thing out of their mouth was, well, this is going to make me rich and famous and I'm going to you know, get on Dr. Phil or whoever and uh, Oprah's going to call me. I would just, kind of gently say, well, I'm probably not the publisher for you because that wasn't likely to happen. Um, the reality is the intention from my perspective is always to help other people, to teach other people, to share your knowledge, to um, build and create something that other people can use to help them. Uh, and so to your point, solve the problem. What's the pain point? But lunching with lions, now, I want everyone to get the book. I'm going to talk more about it. I'm going to share more. I'm going to share the link on how to get it on Amazon. Um, and from the perspective of a small business, a woman small business owner, entrepreneur, yes, you need to get out there and network. But what, what advice do you have to someone just starting, for instance, a baby boomer woman who's now retired, left a job, or she was a stay-at-home mom, kids are gone, and now she wants, yep, yeah, now she wants to do something else. What um, one or two things can you give her to encourage her to get out and network and not be, I mean, read the book is number one, but for this purpose, what would you tell her? Um. Well, I'm going to give her some networking advice and I'm going to give her some business strategy advice. So first of all, um, know what you want to achieve. What is it that you need to succeed in your new venture? Is it um, collaborative partners? Is it connectors? So connectors are people who know the people that you want to know. Mm -hmm. um, so getting very clear about your ideal audience and who can you connect with, who can put you in front of those people. And it's not necessarily another business person. It might be a PTA president, it might be a pastor. So really thinking about who it is that you need to connect with in order to reach your ideal audience. Um, 
And then think about your, what I call your unique per, um, networking personality. And that's something that we are really definitely not taught. And that is a combination of your social style and your learning style. And earlier I said, I like to parallel play. I'm not a great like schmooze person. I, I want to kind of, I'm there for, I'm there for me. I want to talk about me. <laughs> and, um, and so, um, you know, understanding the type of events that you thrive in, the type of um, organizations that are going to allow you to show up as your most authentic self, because the whole nut of networking is you have to show up again and again and again, and you have to have those conversations, and you have to ask the questions, you have to engage. Um, and there's a group that I belong to, um, and I don't know why I keep renewing, except that I really like the women. <laughs> which is not a good reason to renew. Um, but it, it's a two hour meeting and the, the only networking that takes place is when everybody stands up to give their elevator speech. And then the whole rest of the meeting is we're being pitched to and presented to. Um, and I'm not even allowed to really talk to the people at my table. That is not my style. I don't need to be uh, I need to be engaged. I need to be learning. My number one strength is input. I need to be helping others. Um, and so that's not an ideal group for me. Um, but so I created Weibo in my networking style. It's, it's an opportunity for me to show up as my most authentic self to do what I'm really good at, which is to support other women business owners, um, to be very authentic in my dealings with them. And so understanding how you want to network and what kinds of groups you feel the best in so that you show up as your best self. Um, in the book, I say it's hard enough to network and it's damn near impossible if you're, if you're miserable in the, in the room. So I think that's something that, again, the intention, you know, sitting with that for a while and thinking about what events and groups you've been most comfortable in in the past and going out and finding those groups, going out and finding the groups that are populated by the people that you need to connect with, whether it's for professional development and you need to be networking with people in your own industry, whether it's um, power partnerships that you need to be networking with people in complementary industries or people who do the same thing but serve a different person, um, whether it's getting connected to the people who have access to the group of people, usually your clients that you want to get in front of, you know, just being super aware of why you're doing it and, and what you want the result to be can really help you winnow out um, those, those activities that aren't going to get you there very quickly. Um, cause as a solopreneur, especially we have very limited resources. We have limited time, money, and energy, and you really need to be using those, um, wisely so that you can get the results that you want with the, the minimum expenditure of those investments. Um, and then I'm going to take off that hat and put on my business strategist strategist hat and tell you, do not invest in a website, a logo, or anything for the first six months of your business. Just get yourself a basic business card with your name and contacts on it. Go out, have the conversations, talk to people, tell them what you do, get super clear on your value and your brand in the market and who you want to serve before you spend any money on marketing. You are your best voice for your business. And I see way too many women investing a shit ton, excuse my language, a shit ton of money right out of the gate on a website that they're going to change in a year because they've changed everything about their business or a logo that they don't love or no, you don't need any of that. You just need you and a smile and a business card that tells people how to get in touch with you. That's all you need for the first six months of your business. Please, please, please do not spend money on coaching or websites or logos or anything for six months. Please don't do it. Just don't. Uh, awesome advice. Awesome advice. So we're coming, we're coming to the end now, and this has been very helpful. I think a lot of women are going to get, the, get, get a lot out of this because that ending right there, uh, I wish I could cut it out and put it at the beginning, <laughs> but, but the reality, Catherine, oh, Catherine, Yes, Catherine, not Kathleen. Yeah, you're you're there. Everybody, you know, my whole life people have called me Kathleen, so you're not you're oh. not out of the ordinary. My mom no. named me wrong. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Catherine McGraw Patterson, that's a, that's actually a wonderful name. But I am going to say, ladies that are watching, get the book. 
So, so you don't maybe need the website or all these other things. I mean, I tell people all the time, the biggest mistake I ever made when I started my publishing business was spending money on a brochure. Really? Yes. Money thrown out the window. I mean, I didn't need that. Um, we can talk about the website thing, but I think that's good advice because the advice is for you to get comfortable with what you're doing and what you're offering and where you're finding the people that are going to buy from you. So I love that advice. But I also think the book, the book, because we, we are so averse to networking as a group of uh, women uh, because we've been taught to be that way. We've been taught not to talk, not to share, not to, um, not to brag. So, so, Catherine, this has been really phenomenal. Thank you for being. I always love connecting with you. Thank you. Thank you too. And um, I, as I tell everyone, I'm going to circle back in a few months because I really want people um, to get their full benefit of these smart women that I talked to because there's so much more we could say. Yes. Thank you. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.